welcome back everyone to Pod of Thrones. I'm Jeff. I'm Jennifer. So a couple notes. We're going to talk about Lovecraft Country today, but there are a couple like little orders of business that we should cover. And the first one, I, I think this is probably the most important one. We have to give a shout out to Diana Rigg. Rest in peace. Why are you looking at me like that? Diana Rigg is... Olena Tyrell. The Queen Aww. of Thorns. You hadn't heard about this? No, Sorry. I try not to... You know me. <laughs> stress. <laughs> Would this cause you stress? News so causes me stress. she is dead at 82. And as far as I know, <sighs> it is just natural causes. Well, good for her then. Yeah. She, she had a pretty awesome career. Yeah, and pretty good ending years. Yeah, no kidding. If you're going to go out. Kick it off. Go out freaking strong. Man. Yep. Yeah. She had an amazing role there. Yeah. So she, I mean, she had at least the the two, well, she had a few really big roles. There was the Avengers, the uh, the British TV series where she played a you know super spy, <laughs> Emma Peel. Uh, and then she was also in a James Bond movie on Her Majesty's Secret Service. I don't know. Was she young and what, the sexy person? Yes. Oh. Had, well, and she was so sexy. That James Bond married her. <gasps> right. Which one? Which I think is actually like a death sentence for her within like one or two movies or something. But uh, yeah, on Her Majesty's Secret Service, she was in that. And of course, Game of Thrones. And she was in all sorts of other stuff. But those were some pretty noteworthy mm-hmm. accomplishments. That's I'm- awesome. I got to look up that Bond picture. Oh, her character's name was Tracy Di Vincenzo. Wow. Tracy with an E Y I E just T-R-A-C-Y. a Tracy Y. Okay. And Vincenzo? Vincenzo. C H V I C E N Z O. So all of you can Google along with us. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, so I guess uh she was pretty special. But we knew that because she was awesome in Game of Thrones. Nothing came up. We'll have to look it up some other time. <laughs> I, I probably spelled it wrong. Sorry. But let's get... I'll that's that's anyway. really sad, but I'm glad that she did go out with a big bang. She lived a full life. She was awesome. I hope she... Yeah, I know. Beautiful. And COVID didn't, didn't get her. Not that I heard. Good. It was just her time. Uh, and then, speaking of Game of Thrones news. Well, okay. So, Loremaster Kevin... Kevin! Kevin! Uh, he sent me a link the other day to a Nerdist article. Everything we know about The Witcher Season 2, which... We know everything about Witcher Season <laughs> 2. Do we? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the answer to what do we know about Witcher Season 2 is very little. Like, this article is on the verge of being, like, silly. Like, you know, it's like, what's the Season 2 going to be about? Like, that's the first question they answer. It's going to be about Geralt. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. Is that it's going to be about Geralt, he's going to go home, there's going to be more witchers. Like, that's basically all that they know about the season two plot. But there were some good tidbits once you scroll past that part. So okay. thank you this, Kevin. Uh, the biggest part, and I, I, I had heard that he was cast, but I don't know if we ever talked about it, and we didn't really know any other information. But um, Christopher Heavju. Christopher Heavju? Yes. Uh, well, <laughs> good for him. He has been cast. Oh my gosh. What's his name? He's the bear fucker. Oh, Tor- uh, Tor- Thor. Thor. Tormund. Tormund. Tormund the giant. Tormund the gi- right. Ooh. I almost said Tormund the giant. Game Tormund. Of Thrones, we need, we need something new. Game. Come on, Game of Thrones. Our, our brains are fading. Uh, so he's been cast in season two. We don't know how many episodes. Could just be a one-off. Maybe not. But uh, he's been cast to play a character named Nivellen. Nivellen. Nivellen or Nivellen. I don't know. Nevlin. I didn't want like a ton of spoilers, so I tried to do just a skimming of an article to find out who Nivellin is. And um, it looks like it will be a story very similar to Beauty and the Beast, of all things. Hmm. And he's going to be the Beast. Oh, no, not another porcupine. Oh, good point. They do have some precedent for that, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> God. Maybe we're going to find out who has been cursing these people. Did we already know that? I, Somebody cursed him. I don't remember if we know who cursed Dooney. So maybe it's the same. Maybe it'll, it perhaps will be tied in, tied together. Hmm. You know, um, never mind, because I just lost my train of thought. And it, it'll come back. <laughs> That's a shame. And I'll interrupt again. Um, 
Okay, so we have that uh, release date sometime in 2021. That's all we know about that. They are back in production now, though. Um, Sweet. But when they shut, they had been filming for about a month, and then they shut down production for COVID. And one of the people that got hit with COVID was Christopher himself. So he's better now, I think. I don't think he had it too bad. And that's good. News. Oh, good. Um. There's not going to be many uh, loving scenes since they can't, unless they quarantine themselves the entire time. Well, I mean, I hope so. If they exist within, you know, a bubble like the NBA is doing. But then they can't, like, be with their families or anything. Correct. Although I don't think there would be a whole lot of that anyway when you're on set. I mean, I feel like I've heard lots of Hollywood tales of an actor has to go for, like, six months to go film a movie or something and misses his family the whole time but they could come out for weekends or whatever but if your kids are in school you know you can't just you know hmm. so your spouse or that's why they make the table. money yes for the pain and suffering uh-huh. <laughs> that's why. uh yeah, yeah i don't know i mean they probably should be fully quarantined if they're going to make this a successful operation and then yes they could still get it on mm. i think or maybe what they could do is they could have like Geralt in one room like making out with the air or like a mannequin like a green <laughs> mannequin and then Yennefer's in another room making out with a big buff green mannequin and then they CGI them together that'd be so funny <laughs> <laughs> <They're> like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see just limbs moving in strange unnatural directions every once in a while because someone had to like cut their arm out and put it back in a different place <laughs> but, I, I'd be okay with that Her heads also. glitching <laughs> Uh, and, and the last bit of news, uh, we don't know how long this show will last. We do like, we got all into the Marvel shows when they were on Netflix and then those got the ax at one point. So we don't know what the future of the Witcher is, but if it does keep being a popular, successful show, uh, the, someone behind the scenes, the writer, the showrunner, I don't know who it was, but he says that, uh, or she actually, it's a she. So there you go. Nice. Uh, I, I just don't see her first name here. Hisrick. I don't know her first name. Maybe, she, anyway, maybe she only goes by one name. <laughs> she says that she has mapped out seven seasons worth of storylines. Good for so, her. Well, I, that's cool. I'm excited. That's a long time. Well, we had eight of Game of Thrones. It did kind of peter out at the end, but hopefully other newer showrunners have learned their lesson, have learned a lesson from the way Game of Thrones kind of imploded at the end there. Hmm. Yeah. Exciting. Not, not that some people didn't love Game of Thrones ending. I know. Okay. I get it. But a lot of Let's didn't. move on from that, it's people. We got a lot more to right. worry about nowadays. <laughs> yeah, we do. Oh, my gosh. Hey, you started a new job. Way I go. did. I don't remember Super. what we said, but you got laid off like a week and a half into COVID quarantine back mm-hmm. in March. Right. Yeah. And uh, those were some dark times. <laughs> yeah. It's now settling down hopefully things will be great we'll see world's on fire how about yours <laughs> uh something uh, i don't know the words it's okay i don't like smash mouth anyway uh, <laughs> um yeah california's on fire oregon's on fire washington's on fire so all up and down the coast it's the because coast we didn't people. clear the freaking brush we didn't rake enough we needed more rakes people <laughs> Can we get a federal rake grant? Or Has he said anything like Trump that again yet? To, I think he actually did when the uh, fire started. He they said didn't learn last time and they just should have raked. Not cleaning up the forests enough. Fucking bullshit. Of course, one of the bigger fires was started by a uh, gender reveal party. That was... So, uh, fuck. Right. Fuck it. Fuck. Fuckers. I mean, what, <laughs> was it um, an exploding... Yeah. What? An That's exploding a, what? Fireworks or something? Something. Yeah. There's a lot of those things now that people do and you don't always catch fire to stuff, but it's not the first time that one of those. You just has go down to Party a City. Party City just is going to. Just make a blue or a fucking pink cake or whatever the fuck. I mean. Well, I mean, like, where do you get this exploding thing? I don't know. Weird. Maybe they homemade maybe they it. Made their, yeah, maybe they made their own. It's, it's <laughs> like a. Like when people try to uh, deep fry a turkey and it burns down their house. Oh, my God. One of those kind of things. Yeah, that's the only reason I haven't tried that. Because <laughs> <laughs> you'll definitely burn down the house. Yes. Which is saying a lot because you're a good cook, but you do burn yourself a lot. Yeah, or I'll at least pour all of the oil on me. 
It'd be deep fried turkey and <laughs> lightly and- crispy Jennifer. <laughs> Crispy Jennifer, come right up. Mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It'd be delicious. Oh my god. Okay. All right. So, so there's that. So, congratulations on the new job, babe. Thank you. We, we don't know if any of your new coworkers listening to this show. So, just in case, hi. Hi. <laughs> All right. Should we talk about Lovecraft Country? Yes. It's should. super getting and like crazy, even crazier than it has been. <laughs> So this episode, season one, episode four, A History of Violence, hmm. which makes me think of a movie. A you, book. You, you found a book that you were referencing. I'm right. thinking of a uh, Viggo Mortensen movie. Uh, you haven't seen that one, have you? It's about like a guy who was living like a quaint country life and then some like like Ed Harris and a couple other creepy dudes wearing all black come in and have a conversation with him. And I don't know. It turns out he has some kind of past. Hmm. As a maybe an assassin, hard it doesn't criminal thug some kind, and just things in that town go kind of crazy when that. Happens. No, I don't think I've seen that. It's a really interesting movie. It's kind of slow paced, but like this guy has a secret past, a history of violence, perhaps. Hmm. Uh, so it's a really interesting movie. But this is not based on that. There was some. There was a book you found. Do you still have notes about that? Or? No. No. Okay. Well, that's fine. I, I don't think there was a direct correlation necessarily. Between no, I don't think either, there was. Mm-mm. But there is a book, so look that up, see what you think. It sounded interesting, at the very least. All right, so this episode starts with Montrose. He is fucked up. Drunk. <sighs> Montrose. PTSD, some of each. All of it. Yeah. Craziness. He, you think, you thought might maybe possession... Or influence. Well, yeah, I mean, maybe. There, what happens at the end, more than anything, makes me think that maybe he's just well not himself. Oh, like, right. right. Oh, true, yes. Whose interest is he acting in at this point, mm-hmm. I guess, is my question. He could be possessed. Right, and why was he so freaking out? Was it just everything that... I, I, who I knows? So. Well, but, he was having flashbacks to, like, childhood stuff that was happening. Beating and, like, tick. Abuse, beating... Uh, well, his, his him being beaten as a child. Oh, I thought uh, Tick maybe taking some beatings too. But there was George talking about how Montrose could be his last hope or whatever. You know, it, it I thought like that it was Montrose him. beating Tick and Montrose yelling at him to go pick a switch boy. I think it was both. Could be, yeah. There was a, there was a lot oh well, yeah, there. that's true because he did get really badly beaten for putting up signs for incoming what was it warriors or something. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> But then throughout all of that was an audio clip about nuclear proliferation, which was right. Yeah. But also there was a point in there where he said, look at you priming in the mirror. Preening in the mirror, I think it said. So he was either talking about. Oh, probably Dora. Dora, case. right. Getting all prettied up for something. Probably George. Or maybe it was his dad saying that about Montrose. Oh, fuck. I bet you're right. Now, let's say Montrose has his secrets that are troubling him. So he ha- he definitely had his own history involving violence and that. But let's say maybe Montrose is gay in a time where it's bad enough being black. Right. To also be gay is not going to be an easy life. And certainly when you're raised a certain way, you're going to be... You're going to have to cover that up, right? So he got married. Maybe, I mean, not that it excuses anything necessarily. Like, maybe that's why Dora needed some satisfaction on the side. You know, maybe, like, they just didn't have a sex life because Montrose wasn't really into it. Maybe Dora knew he was potentially gay. There's hints in this episode that he might be gay. Uh, So you're absolutely right. Maybe he was the one preening in the mirror and got a severe beating for it. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why he has that scar on his face. Maybe. He got bashed into a mirror. Oh, my gosh. I mean, that actor has the scar, but. That'll be interesting if they incorporate it. it. It's like uh, Harrison Ford has that scar on his chin, and that used to come up on on different movies for different Hmm. reasons. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, yeah. So a lot's happening with Montrose. He pulls out a copy of the bylaws of the order of the ancient dawn. Right. And we get to see this one passage, which read Adam named, which we covered a couple episodes ago, or was that? Yeah. Second episode. Uh, Adam got to name all the animals. That's what that whole painting that we saw was about. Right. Right. So Adam named Eve fucked. 
We why do they have it. to? Why can't they just? I don't know. Eve made love. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Eve boinked. As if Adam had nothing to do with that. Well, but think about the Eve painting we saw. She was fucking a snake. No, the snake was well, the snake making was love to her. Right. Well, <laughs> or fucked. No. <laughs> uh, but Eve, well, because Eve is blamed for sin, right? Not that this is right, okay, right. obviously, but she's the well, one that gets maybe, all the blame. Is the origin of that word not exactly what it is today? What, sin? Fucked. Fuck. 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 I don't think there's actually a clear story on the origin of the term fuck. There's something about like fornicating under the something with the king or something. I don't know. But but that's that's never been proven okay. as the real origin of the word. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But we have, uh, so it says Adam named, fine, we got that. Eve fucked. She did sin. Uh, God fu- brought forth monsters. Okay. Monsters devoured. Sounds about right. And then God smites Eden. So mm-hmm. No more paradise. Right. It's all the woman's fault. <laughs> it's all Eve's fault for fight. Adam didn't do anything wrong. He was just naming shit. Uh, so it would appear that George gave him the book before dying. Great. Uh, we get that. And then after reading that passage, Montrose burns the book up. And what does he say as it starts to burn? <laughs> Smells like Tulsa. <laughs> we still haven't watched Watchmen, but we do know a little bit about the Tulsa race massacre, and there's obviously some kind of correlation there, right? Uh huh. It's the burning of Tulsa, right? Plus, he's drunk out of his gourd, so who knows what it really smells like? There we go. So that was quite the opening scene. A lot going on, right? We, he we already watched it. it twice, and I still don't feel like we got everything out of that scene. But like, but you're telling me stuff I didn't notice, like the preening thing. I, I, I think you're right. So could be way to go. All right. Okay. So after the credits, Christina Braithwaite driving around like a badass. Uh, she's apparently invulnerable. So it's okay to drive like a psychopath if you don't care about who else gets hurt. Uh, and she swings by Letitia's boarding house. She tries to just march on inside and bounces off a magical barrier, which was kind of awesome. <laughs> yeah. She was kind of like, what? <laughs> yeah. And it, I don't know, they, there's there's a blood mark on the doorway. Is that what's keeping Christina out? Or was yeah, it something she, else it's, from Hiram? Uh, no, it's the, wait. Like Hiram could have had an anti-Braithwaite enchantment put on the house. Which, I think it was the blood mark. It could be the blood mark. Which, if the blood mark is to keep out evil, that tells us whatever we need to know about Christina, doesn't it? Hmm. Hmm. She might hmm. be evil. I mean, she seems like such a nice person. She does. She doesn't, I mean, well, clearly she wants power. Yes. And she seems to want power partially because it's like what she grew up with, but partially because she wants to. Destroy men. Yeah. Well, I kind of think it's something like that. Destroy Adam. You know, revenge herself upon men who have been pricks. Hmm. Well, hmm. I mean, that makes me kind of want to root for her. I can't wait to hear her story of growing up, what her growing up life was. Oh, a backstory for her? That would be cool. Yeah. I hope we get that. That would be awesome. Maybe season two. Uh, okay, so she fails to get in. Um, and while she's facing off with Letitia, she tells her about how Tick tried to kill her this morning. So it's the same day. Uh, and she warns him that, uh, she warns Letty that he's going to get her killed again. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I don't want that to happen. Do you think she's being genuine? Genuine? Christina might like Letty because Letty's kind of cool and also a woman. And Christina's cool with women. Yeah, it's a sister. There's not many of them around in this show either. I mean, I feel like Letty has kind of, uh, some kind of special specialty about her, also. Well, maybe now that she came back to life, yeah, she's she definitely dead, magical. She, she, she'll have some kind of powers before this is all over. Um, okay, and then finally, Christina says all she wants is Hiram's old orrery. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And that orrery, as it turns out, is at George and Hippolyta's shop. Now, how she got it there? Yeah, that's a good question. During that party. That thing looks heavy. 
Maybe she took it when the police came and everybody was outside and Letty was banging in the car windows. Sure. I mean, why not? But it does look heavy. Not that Hippolyta can't lift a heavy thing, but just getting it out of the house, Mm. down all those stairs. Maybe she just threw out the window. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe she jumped out the window. Maybe she touched it and it teleported her home. Who knows? I certainly don't. Maybe it's just something we should overlook. Maybe. (laughs) But she did get it out of there, and she's um, she's on the phone with her dad, talking mm-hmm. about how she found this thing, and there's a universe, but it has two suns, and this is where I think she's wrong, based on my own research. Oh. I think that giant thing that's floating above the main solar system is not a sun. I think it's Yogoth and its moons, not a sun with other A moons. planet. I think, I think that giant thing is one planet full of monsters. That's my guess. Not Sawgoth. Not Shawgoth. Or Shawgoth. Yogoth. 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 Okay. Uh, but we don't know. Uh, she can't get this thing to work, though. Somewhere it's mm-hmm. broken. She can't figure out how to get inside it to get at the gears that would make it turn. Now, how in the heck do they know all of this? Like, back in that day, they didn't have books available to learn that much information. Which, about? About the universe. Uh, and the solar system. Well, we said this is in the mid fifties. This show, yeah, sure. I mean, I think they had some decent astronomy down at, the, at that point. Did they? I think so. They might not have discovered Neptune and Pluto yet, maybe, but I think they knew about how all these other planets that they had discovered are orbiting the solar system. I hmm. mean, look, we had a, a, a planetarium in this. No, episode, that's true. Right? That's true. That's true. All right. I think they knew a fair amount. And they certainly knew what gears were. Not that it matters. <laughs> we, I analyze too much. It's okay. That's what we're here for. To try to figure out the questions that other people are asking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some other guy that's talking to her about how she'll figure it out, but we don't know. Who he that seems guy nice. Is. He seems nice though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he didn't get a name. All right. So, meanwhile. Letty goes to the library again. You know what is? What? I have to say this because yes. I just, it just hit me. This is the first, well, not the first movie, but like these are the first times that movies are being made where African Americans are in such a positive light, and you don't run into to like a bunch of hoodlums, you know. It's just a community. Right, and it's awesome. <laughs> Which it is exactly how has it always is. made me so I don't know uncomfortable to watch movies that were portraying always violence from African Americans and you know gangs right. and yeah. portraying them as all bad. That's all we ever saw. This right. is pretty cool. Well, this was a time where it was not easy to be a black person by any means, but I think it seems like. I mean, like you had Tulsa, right? Like the whole point about the Tulsa Race Massacre was that there was this community within Tulsa that was self-sufficient. Like it was a working community all on its own and everybody was getting along Mm -hmm. within the community and it was okay. And there were businesses that were flourishing and there was money to be had. Sounds like a lot like where they live right now. Maybe that's why it smells like Tulsa. (laughs) Well, I mean, I think they have some of that, yes, although a little more racism from, you know, the cops that maybe come in and out. But um, but things, I think, changed after Tulsa. I, I think there was a stronger drive, you know, in that time frame to do better at keeping money out of black people's hands, mm. the hands of black communities. Uh, and and to keep, make sure that taxes didn't go there, and, you know, the schools were bad and, and all that stuff. Um, and the housing, yeah, you know, all all those things that you know, uh, I think, I think that's part of it. But but it's still kind of okay in this area of Chicago where they live. It's not necessarily a bad place to live. It seems right. It yeah. seems semi safe. But as but but it's and- after this era where you start getting more white flight into the suburbs, and then the cities start to decay. It's it's something we talked about before. I don't think on air, but it's like. The white people will come into the city to work in the office buildings, but then they take their money home. Right. To up to communities that get their taxes for their schools and that kind of thing. So eventually the cities decay. But right now it's not really that bad. I think that's what we're seeing. 
even if it's segregated, it's not destitution mm-hmm. at every turn. And it's the gang, the gangs rise up out of the destitution. Like that became a big thing in the seventies. I studied that once in college. We, we, we did a, a unit on that in a sociology class, which was the gangs came up because communities were imperiled and the gangs actually started as like community organizing and defense. And, and, you know, you protect your community, you do good by them. And they gradually became more and more violent. I think as the system just fell apart completely within the cities. Hmm. Uh, but that's kind of how it started. It wasn't, it wasn't, wasn't always, it wasn't like always this. violence and, and crime. Interesting. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, so she can't figure out how to fix the gears. <laughs> 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 so Letty goes to the library. That's the next scene. Letty goes to the library. Uh, she finds Atticus there. How does she know he was there? Whatever. But she confronts Atticus. And uh, he's always at the library reading. <laughs> Why do you think she confronts Atticus about him trying to kill Christina? Was it because she doesn't want Christina dead or he's being too risky? She wants to know what the hell. Ha- she wants to know what the fuck is going on. He didn't I think. Tell her. Yeah, he didn't tell that. her he's doing something on his own agenda and yeah, she just wants to know what's up. Mm -hmm. Um, And he starts explaining how Christina can't be killed, which Mm -hmm. is kind of a big deal. Yeah. Uh, And then at least Letty calms down at that point. Uh, Atticus's theory is that Christina used him as a Trojan horse to kill Samuel. So I think you were saying something about this during the episode three podcast, which was, this was all Christina's plan all along. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, Samuel's the one that like had Montrose come, but Christina appears to be pulling the strings in the background. She is the puppet master. Maybe she's even smarter than Samuel. Well, I guess he wasn't really that smart. Um, okay, so he's trying to figure out a way to stop Christina now. Uh, he tells Letty about how there's two different sets of deciphered pages, or pages to be deciphered, and the uh, he thinks that the orrery must be the key to finding Hiram's pages. But no one knows where the orrery is now. <laughs> uh, so Titus hid his in a vault, a trapped vault. Christina told him that last episode. Uh, if Atticus can find those pages, he could cast protective spells on his own. And that's why he's not heading back to Florida. He wants to try to help. Now, what if they just had left all of this alone? Let Christina have the orrery. It's an interesting question. I mean, just stop. See what happens. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes you get yourself into trouble when you jump too fast. They could make themselves immortal. Well, they're trying to. But we don't know what they want to, like, are they, do they want to inflict evil upon the world or are they just in it for themselves? I guess that's the bigger question. Well, Tick, they want to protect themselves and they want, I think, not to have this power in anybody else's hands. But Christina also likes to snuggle baby Shoggoths. She does. If if she wants to unleash more of those things upon the world after she's achieved her immortality, the world could become an inhabitable place. Hmm. 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 So she can't necessarily be trusted. Uh, but Tick's a hero, so, you know, he's not going to give her what she wants. Uh, okay, so Atticus thinks he has to go back to Artem. He doesn't want help from his dad or Letty. Uh, but... After Letty leaves and Montro uh, and uh, Tick is like checking through some of the books and stuff, he sees that Montrose has checked all of these same books out of the library recently. Mm-hmm. So he's been doing his research. He's not just a drunk fool. He's been trying to figure this shit out himself. Uh, and one of the books, if it matters, it include it, one of them is Journey to the Center of the Earth, right? Which does come up later. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, Atticus goes to Sammy's bar, I think it was Sammy's bar, and finds Montrose and Letty conspiring together, but they have him sit down. So Montrose, they're talking, they're talking. Montrose lets slip something about how one lodge is gone, but there's 34 more that could be coming after them. And it's like, how do you know there's 34? And he's like, uh, I don't. (laughs) (laughs) (gasps) Whatever. Uh, But his point, Montrose's point, is that they, they can't win this war. Right. They this are. this there's, is magic shit. There's like three of them. <laughs> <laughs> Versus 34, 34 with however many members. Right. Uh, violent, magical psychos. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So he's not going to help. Racist. And well, some of them, maybe mm-hmm. not all of them. We don't know if the Braithwaites are actually racist or not. They probably are a little bit. No, I don't think they are, but. All right, maybe not. Uh, okay, so Letty, after Tick storms off, Letty's like, I know you have answers, motherfucker. 
Uh, and he eventually relents and says he thinks he knows where to find the vault, and it's in Boston. So. Right. Mm-hmm. Here we go to Boston. But first, Christina. So now Christina's just hanging out in a nice neighborhood. Yeah, this is weird. Playing hide-and-seek with some kids. Weird. And she's never played hide-and-seek before. Weird. And she's doing like a weird dance. Right. <laughs> That's the weirdest part. <laughs> she's funny. Can't uh, catch me. But it, I th- it seems like her reason for being there maybe was to attract the attention of the cops. I don't know. It's weird. I, yeah. But some cops come in and take her to Captain Lancaster, the same police captain we saw last episode that beat the shit out of Letty. In that and this thing. appears to be in one of those lodges. Well, he has a secret door that leads to his office. Well, I thought that it looked not like a police station. Yeah, I don't think it was. I think, I think it, it was, was a lodge. Other building. It wasn't as fancy as the lodge out in the country. It's like a city lodge, right? Maybe. So like I don't a, know. It's, it's their like secret. A, like a normal city right. I don't know, warehouse or something. But you go inside and there were cops guarding a door and or guarding a hallway. And then there was a secret door that leads into Lancaster's office. Mm-hmm. <sighs> so they have a little conversation. They don't seem to like each other. No, he calls her the bad word. <laughs> yep. Uh, christina see i think i think she wanted to get brought in by the police because she wants to talk to him about hiram's orrery Mm. and she says i need that orrery it's the key to unlocking hiram's time machine so that seems like it's going to be a big deal does she know where tire where hiram's time machine is do we know that i know that hasn't been mentioned maybe the orrery is the time machine maybe and we did see in one of the previews of episodes to come what appeared to be Hippolyta in armor. That's right. Like in the desert or something. That's right. Yeah. So I feel awesome. like Hippolyta is going on a trip. And nice. This was just our first preview of that. She's so going to get it working and then she's going to be like, oops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sucked into a black hole. Yeah. I think that's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, so there's there's going to be time travel. That kind of sucks because we're going... We, it's been so nice having one timeline so far. But at least the clothing is going to change, so... So... Well, no, it's a different timeline. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it it seems... won't be as confusing. That's true. Okay. Uh, Lancaster thinks that the orrery is in his lodge's property. Does that mean the house or somewhere else? He know. does. Uh, and she questions that his that he's even ever been initiated into the order. He hasn't. But he thinks he has. Well, so he there's... didn't say, I have or have not. He just says, I know you haven't, cunt. Right. Well, yes. He said, I know one thing, no cunts allowed. Yeah. Not even if you think you can find the stolen pages. Not even if you're the daughter of the guy that just, like, almost opened a door to Eden <laughs> somehow. <laughs> Right, and you probably know a lot. Like you, you watch, useful ally, but I'm going to be a shithead to you anyway. <laughs> right? Why? Why, I... why are they so mad? Um, who? The cop? These people. The well, Lancaster. If he's part of the well, he's mad because he doesn't have control over that house. Well, he was mad and, all the night. Well, and black people got the house. I don't so understand like, people like anger. Anger just is not good. Well, but, but but there was a rivalry, right? Hiram stole pages from Titus. Okay. Or Samuel. I guess Samuel. Hiram stole pages from that chapter, from Artem, let's say. So he stole pages. So now if, if, if Lancaster was part of Hiram's own little lodge, even if that lodge was illegitimate, but if he's but part of that lodge, then there, it's like a gang war. Wasn't like that a, a long time war. ago? Well, Titus was. That's why I'm thinking Hiram. Oh, this is craziness. This is craziness. Samuel, I think. I'm just getting more confused. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, oh, wait. No, Hiram could have been that long ago. Sorry. I'm going to say this one more time. Hiram stole pages from Titus. That's why Titus had his pages in one vault and Hiram's pages are somewhere else. Hiram was the ghost in the house. He died 100 years ago, probably. Or close right. to Right. He's wearing because old-timey clothes. it wasn't Hiram clothes. that was doing the experiments. It was that other scientist guy. And Lancaster was feeding that scientist guy people to experiment sure. on. People that he was arresting. Right. So, like, they were all part of the same lodge, even if, again, it's not an officially recognized chapter. He would like to be part of the lodge. Right. But they are bitter rivals, I think. Gotcha. Ooh, uh, all this time, there's, like, weird moaning noises in the background, like something's going on in the I know, room. and... Ugh. 
either someone's being tortured or someone's like transforming into a monster or I don't know. Christina's just looking in there like it's no big deal. Could have been sex. There could have been a sex ritual going on. Uh, Maybe. It sounded more pained. It didn't sound good. Yeah. Unhappy moaning. Uh, Yeah. But uh, I guess the good news for Christina at this point, because the captain's not happy with her anyway, is that he doesn't seem to know anything about the fact that Christina was the reason that Letty has that house. So Mm -hmm. there's that. Right. Yeah. That's good news. All right. And that, I think, is it for Christina. Uh, Well, no. No, there's one more scene. But that was... That was most of it. Okay, so meanwhile, over in Chicago, uh, they're packing for a trip. Hippolyta and Diana are going on this trip to Boston with them. They want to go to the museum. So now where do they live? Chicago. They live in Chicago. How far is it to to Boston? Boston. How long does that take? A while. I'm going to look it up while we discuss. It's got to be like 10 to 12 hours. Okay. I'm guessing. At least. Maybe more. Because uh, it's all the way on the East Coast. I mean, it's not a short trip from Chicago to Boston. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, okay. So they're going to go to a museum. Uh, so then the, as they're leaving, this dude walks in front of the car. It's Tree, or uh, Seymour, I guess his name is. We've seen him a few times now. He works at Samuel's bar. Or Samuel? No. Fuck. Too many names. Uh, Skippy. No. I thought it was Sammy. Sammy. That's it. He works at Sammy's bar. That's the first time we saw him. Anyway, he wants a ride because he's got a Philly in Philly. 15 hours. 15 hour drive. There you go. All right. So they all get in the car. They let Tree come with. whoop de doo All right. Uh, Ruby, meanwhile, uh, Letitia's sister, she walks into Marshall Field. She's finally maybe ready to turn in her resume. But there's already another black lady working there. Right. This little lady named Tamara. Uh, she's so sweet. She's a brand new hire. Very nice. Mm-hmm. And Ruby said. Ruby said. She missed her chance. Yep. And she's blaming it on Letty, of course. Right. Of course, it's Letty's fault because she was trying to set up that house instead of finishing her resume. Yep. Oops. All right. We get a big placard. Boston. So now we're in Boston. Uh, Hippolyta and Dee head into the museum. There's a Titus Braithwaite wing to the museum. And they have a hard time shaking off Seymour, Tree. He's going to follow our heroes around, mm-hmm. which is kind of a bummer. Right. Uh, I did take a note that Boston seems a little better integrated than the other stuff we've seen so far. I mean, even Chicago, like we haven't seen a lot of positive interactions between black people and white people. But in this museum, it's just all comers. Right. You got black people. Nobody's in, giving sneers. Right. No one's looking at them. Or being like, kind of, kind grumbling. Of nice. Like, that's where you'd want to live, I think. Be They're not being surrounded by a bunch of Fucking white boys. Oh, yeah. That too. Uh, okay, so what happens in the museum? We do get a scene in a um, planetarium. There's a, a late... Right, uh, where we show. find out Hippolyta discovered the comet. What was it? Hera's... Hera's chariot. Hera's chariot. Did you look it up? I did. It's not a real thing. Oh. As far as I can tell, it's not a real comet. Well, is that what Hippolyta want, wanted to name it, or was that what it ended up being named? I think it was her idea to name it that, but someone else had to take the credit because no one's going to listen to Hippolyta because she's black. Well, what I was wondering is if it was really named something else. I don't think so. I think that's what it was called. Okay. I felt like this scene was kind of a throwaway, except that if Hippolyta is going to wind up time traveling, she already has a Greek name, as does Diana. Hippolyta was the queen of the Amazons. Diana was the goddess of the hunt. So we are in a Greek direction here. And now Hera, also Greek goddess, Mm. wife of Zeus, mother of Heracles. Okay. Um, Actually, no, not the mother of Heracles. Sorry. Zeus was the father of Heracles. Hera was not the mother, even though they were married. It was one of Zeus's many affairs, and he was called Heracles, sort of to mock her, I believe. Anyway, so this, I just feel like this might have something to do with what is coming down Hippolyta's path. Okay. That's all. We're going to have to have a discussion about Greek mythology sometime. See, what if Hippolyta is named after herself? Hmm. What if she goes back in time and becomes queen She's of She's like Hippolyta, the... 89th or something. Well, it would just, it would make for some fucked up, like paradoxical shit. Yeah. If Hippolyta goes back in time and winds up leading an army of Amazons and 
her name's Hippolyta, then that winds up going into the Greek mythological history books. And then later on, when she's born for real, she's named after herself. Hmm. Yeah, could be. Alrighty. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the Braithwaite wing of the museum, um, Tick finds a map of Samuel Braithwaite's voyages. That's going to become important. Uh, meanwhile, Tree, Seymour, whatever, he's talking and talking and talking and talking. Uh, but eventually it comes to a point where he implies that Montrose might be getting it on with Sammy. And, right. And at first, Tick thinks that he's saying something about Sammy uh, in a way that might be implying that Tick is gay. And he says, I'm no sissy. So that's a bummer. Mm -hmm. But then he understands that it might be Montrose and Tick seems put off by that idea. Well, I don't know that to me, the, what they, I think that he was conveying like, what could it be? You know? Well, yeah, but then he starts getting all suspicious. How do you know that guard? Well, yeah, Yeah. but I don't think it was like, I mean, I do I don't know. I mean, I think if it, if you call, if you associate gay with being a sissy, you know, I think, I think there could be something bad coming up where Tick winds up not being that shining moralistic hero that we want him to be. I don't think so. I think that's just what they called them back then. Yeah, but it's not a compliment. I mean, no, it's not being, a compliment. Being gay back then was very bad. In- right. But it's better than saying faggot or... I don't know what other words they use that were used. Well, sure. But the question is, if if Montrose turns out to be gay, how is Atticus going to react right. to that? I think he'll be all right with it. You think so? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I think I think it's leading to badness. But hmm. we'll see. Uh, but Montrose, whether it had anything to do with being gay or not, made a deal with the security guard to get let in the back door eh, later tonight. Okay. Uh, now, Christina's final scene, she pulls up to some big mansion in Chicago, walks inside. There's a car out there watching her, watching the house. Uh, William, as soon as she comes inside, William immediately walks outside and beats the ever-loving fuck out of these two cops. Yeah. You, you enjoyed this. I did. That was... <laughs> I. They deserved it. For following Christine? No, it was the, it was, uh, what's a guy, his guy's name, uh, the the, captain, the captain, right. It was captain's boys. So, you know, they were just as bad as him. Right. Right. No matter what you think of everyday cops in the real world, these cops are cultists as well. (laughs) Right. They're dirty, (laughs) doing no good. They're dirty rotten scandals. They were probably involved in the kidnapping of all those people we saw in the last episode, the, Mm -hmm. the, the victims and probably do all sorts of other nasty shit so, right yeah, so yes good. i did love that and i thought that william was either like asexual or gay or just like a tool for christina to use I, like he had no i just felt like he was weak you know mm-hmm. like a weak character now and the a moment he right like dobby mr braithwaite gave william a sock right (laughs) but i thought that um at that moment i was like oh shit he's he's not dobby (laughs) he's no dobby (laughs) uh wow okay i i like that not Um, that gay means like you're dobby i was just didn't think that he was interested in women or interested in sex at all. I saw a subject line in the Lovecraft, Lovecraft country subreddit, which I probably shouldn't subscribe to, but I can't like, there, cause there's a book, so I don't want spoilers. So I didn't read in deeper, but I did see someone posted the subject line questioning whether or not Christina and William could be the same person. <gasps> Maybe have we seen them together? No, Ooh. I don't think we have. So it's an interesting idea. Whoa. Like she walks into the house, shape shifts, walks right back out and beats the fuck out of them. Like, oh my God. Like it's her Hulk form or something, you know? Oh my God. That was, that's a hell that's of an idea. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Hmm. 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 Indeed. 
So just so yes, I'm that. well, and so we're going to talk about Ruby and William now. Uh, not quite. Okay. We're getting there. If we go scene by scene, we're not quite there. All right. So now it's nighttime, and they are in the museum. We didn't see them get in, but they're there. Uh, they all have their flashlights. Tick and Letty and Montrose. No sign of the security guard. He's not coming along for this ride. And they did get rid of Tree. So good. Uh, so they're looking for a secret door in the statue of Titus Braithwaite that's in the museum. Montrose is the one that figures out that Moonlight is the key to finding it. A little too easy. A little too Raiders of the Lost Ark. Very Raiders of the Lost Ark. I'm sure the book must explain everything better. There must have been some kind of thought process or part of his research that would have led him to figure this out. But anyway, maybe Moonlight comes in and bounces off of the statue, bounces on the thing, goes onto the map. The map shoots out Moonlight then into a crocodile tooth. <laughs> Letty pushes the crocodile tooth and a door pops open. Wow. That was a hell of a thing. Okay, right. Cool. It's a long way down. Uh, Atticus shows off how big and strong he is by climbing down that rope without even using his legs. Mm. Mm. <laughs> that make you tingle a little bit? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Montrose had a harder time. Um, but there, there's... That's uh, what she said. <laughs> there's <laughs> something written on the ceiling around that uh, hole. Beware all ye who tread the path, ever the tides shall rise. So... Yeah. Again, very like... Indiana Jones, National mm-hmm. Treasure, mm-hmm. Disneyland. Mm-hmm. Like it feels like Pirates of the Caribbean almost uh, by the end. Goonies. Goonies, right. It's got all the classics mixed up. Uh, so they need the map of Titus's voyages. Letty grabs that out of the glass case. Then she and Montrose come down the rope. Fine. Uh, Titus returned from a Caribbean expedition in 1810. He found the Sons of Adam three years later. I don't know. Again, I found this part a little confusing. I feel like they didn't explain much of what their thought process was. But somehow, figuring out his expeditions and when he renovated the museum and all that led them to pick one particular tunnel out of the three. And they were right. So, that's good. But I I didn't quite Hmm. understand the whole reasoning. I bet it's... Right. I'm I'm sure in the book. I feel like there was... yeah, we would have to watch it a third time to probably nope, catch it. No, nope, we don't have time. Okay. <laughs> I know that they said that there was something about north, and so that's the way the tunnel they took. And somebody had already taken the lantern or whatever it was that was supposed to be hanging there down the tunnel. Uh, Atticus took the lamp. No, there was no lamp on the tunnel that oh, they were going down. Oh, is that what he was looking at? So he I went and grabbed a different one. I think. I don't know. But there was no lamp there. No, I think I think you're right. I think you're right. He was looking at a place where he would hang a lamp. And I think that was a bad tunnel because whoever went down that path never came back. Oh, and that's when he's like, are you sure we should rethink this? Yeah, maybe. Could be. One of those. You're right. The, the lantern was important. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now we cut to Ruby. She's doing a little gig in Sammy's bar. Singing some blues. Her heart's not quite in it. No, she seems angry and let down. She's not as fun as usual. Ruby finishes her set. She goes up to the bar. She's going to relax, have a drink, whatever. She's not in a good mood. And William's there. (laughs) Right. He he did tell the cops he had a date. He did. Which the immediate implication would be he's got dinner with Christina or something. Because maybe he's sweet on her. Right. That's what I thought. He said he, in the beginning, he was a personal assistant of Christina. Braithwaite or something like that. Yeah. Well, he made it clear that he was not a member of the family. We don't know his last name. But uh, yeah, he's, he's a servant of some kind. Mm-hmm. We knew that. Mm-hmm. But he didn't have a date with Christina anyway. He has a date with Ruby. <laughs> well, and hopefully he has a date with Ruby. Uh-huh. Uh, so he is going to buy her some drinks and she's trying to put him off right away. Like, hey, white man, you don't get to get up on this. Yeah. Better men than you have tried to conquer this mountain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but he is going on attack of how he can change her life forever. Yeah. Don't know what that means, but what is? And then we go back to the tunnels. So lots of cobwebs in those tunnels. No one's been there for a while, I guess. Well, hang on now a second. What? How has Ruby never seen Christina Braithwaite? No. Okay. Ruby wasn't on the first adventure where they were in Artem. I just thought she had seen her or 
Okay. We saw Ruby in episode in you know in previous episodes just being in in Chicago, and now imagine if she's never seen Christina before. The moment she lays on eyes on Christina after meeting William. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, the Dog of Thrones has her own strong opinions about the nature of Christina and William and Ruby and their little love triangle in the making. Uh, okay, so back in the tunnels, they find the longest plank ever. No kidding. Who put that there? <laughs> and how? Titus, Titus, I guess. Carried it. Well, I mean, it has to be magic. It is. It violates so many laws of physics. Hang on, let me tell shit. I got it. The, do- the Dog of Thrones needs to be silenced. <laughs> Did that work? Yes. <laughs> if you just command silence from the Dog of Thrones, she will be silent. That's right. She's so well trained. Yeah. For some. Maybe. I guess that works for you. Not me. Okay. So it's the longest fucking plank that we've ever seen. <laughs> right. Place, right. It's and so it can long. support the weight of three people. Well, they hope. That's why they made Letty go first. Is that why? Yes. <laughs> I just thought they didn't like her. <laughs> See if it could even hold her weight. <laughs> if it can't hold her weight, for sure it's not going to hold ours. If I was Tick, I would ask Montrose to go first. You know, yeah, he's the stable. oldest. Although he's the most, like, I don't know. He's not going to hand. He's true. He's not brave or strong. <laughs> Fit, mentally competent. Right. He's not a lot. He's of very things. weak. Yeah. Uh, so they tie up some safety ropes. Ladies first. It, it really just did seem assumed. Right. She didn't even question it. She didn't be like, why am I going first? Right. I would have been. Wouldn't you? Yes. Like, Fuck you. You go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so she goes out there first. Um, something happens halfway across and they don't hear from her. So Tick has to go out there too. Right. Why not just answer? She was scared. You can't say anything? Or maybe she was trying to hide. Maybe she thought it was an animal. Oh, okay. I think she did. Yeah. She, she says something's flying around out there. But it turns out it's a giant blade, not a monster. Now, how many hours did they say they had to get all of this done? From the time they... they uh, two. Two, two hours, hours, hours before the security guard shift changed. Okay. And then they would have no doubt found the broken glass and the open secret door. Okay. The open secret door, still going to be sort of a question in someone's head later, right? <laughs> well, I think they thought maybe they were going to go back and close it. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they totally did. But still, I mean, I'm hoping that the security guard at least can be like, no one knew about that secret door. So the broken glass, I don't even know who gives a shit, but that's fucked up. Right. Let's go check that out. (laughs) Well, then they'll all die, which will be fine. Then it's over. Anyway, there's a big blade out there. I was hoping for a monster. Total. But, oh, well. We see a total video game. Yes. Well, and it gets worse. So first there's a big flying blade like right out of skyrim and many right. other video games sure but uh then as soon as letty gets past the blade which apparently can only be done by jumping well yeah, that that's the fastest way is it i don't know <laughs> you can't just scamper <laughs> across as soon as the blade passes you maybe that <laughs> <laughs> anyway, i don't know she has to jump across but as soon as one body gets past that blade the plank starts to disappear well without falling it's magic because it's magic right maybe there's physics maybe magic. there's really floor right below them they could have just walked thinking, on the side yeah. and it was just a painting of uh-huh. i was thinking very indiana jones where there was that leap of faith part where it was an invisible bridge ah i kind of i was kind of thinking that like you know montrose didn't have to jump he could have just stepped down onto the uh-huh. stone but yeah anyway uh okay so montrose has to jump for it Atticus catches him. They don't lose their balance on There's this. no way. Yeah, there's no way. Absolutely no way. You would not lose balance. Well, Montrose like, just could have gone back and been like, I'll close the door. Make sure no one finds us. Or he could have just said, jump on your own and keep your balance. Well, yeah, that too. That would have been safer. But Tick's so you, big and strong. You better catch me, boy. <laughs> or what? We both die. <laughs> uh, so they get past the big blade. And then they come up to a secret door, not a secret door, but a combination lock door. And the right. only way to get through that door was to know the Adam passage from the book. You have to push the buttons in the right order. Very Skyrim Adam or names, other Ian games. Fox and so on and so on. Right. Very, very video gamey. 
Uh-huh. Maybe, mm-hmm. they're, maybe they're working on a Lovecraft Country video game. Hmm. And this is going to be part That'd of it. That'd be a good game. Cool. And as soon as they get through that door, they are now in water. That is the rising tide, as referenced earlier. And Tick figures they have less than an hour before they drown. Right. So they've been in there for one hour. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's important now that we walk as slowly as possible and take lots of breaks. Right. Let's stand here <laughs> for five minutes while Letty swims ahead. Is that where we're at? And we'll have a fight about it. No, not yet, but it's coming. <sighs> uh, first, we get the Ruby scene. Oh, the Ruby mm, scene. That was a good Ruby. scene. Ruby, Ruby. Um, okay. So she's talking about her Marshall Fields job and being a sad sack. And they aren't going to hire a second black woman, yada, yada, yada. But then William's staring at her. Mm. His eyes like lasers into her boobs. I don't know. <laughs> and she's like, don't you, we're not going to do nothing. And then all of a sudden they're doing everything. Were they, we don't know where they were. I feel like it was too nice of a place. I think it might've been William's mansion. Or um, mansion. I thought it that, I thought it was the house, Letty's house. The boarding house? Well, she's the boarding not house. the boarding house though, is she? Maybe she Yeah, is. she's living there. Hmm. Unless she moved out. I just thought it looked too nice for the boarding house. Well, they've been, they've been cleaning it up, right. but I don't know. They were somewhere, and... I can't imagine them driving all the way back to Devon County. Well, that wasn't in Devon County. That the was mansion? somewhere in Chicago. It had to be because the cops were there. Aye, aye, aye. It was, you know, they have lots of houses. The Artem collapsed into a sinkhole. So that, that was in Devon County. Um, true. Okay, so true. a couple things we see happen in this uh, sex scene. First of all, Ruby gets her hand cut open, and William sucks the blood. Mm-hmm. Now, let's say hypothetically, Christina and William are the same person, and now Christina has sucked up some of Ruby's blood, and Ruby is Letitia's sister. This could enable Christina. To get past the magical barrier. Ah. Oh. Maybe. Maybe. Or maybe they're not the same person, but it's enough for William now to get inside the house. But is ingesting blood the same? I mean, her DNA is not going to be in her blood now. I don't know. It's magic. <laughs> I don't know. What a day to be recording. There appears to be a tea kettle of, of massive proportions going off somewhere in the distance. Maybe it's a bomb. If it's a bomb, we'll see y'all later. I mean, it's been good. Somehow this episode will make it onto the internet. It's like when the bombs hit when in Fallout. Mm, Right. That you get that screaming noise. Yes. Yes. They're about to fall. Mm, Damn. It was nice knowing you all. Yeah. Anyway. Love you, babe. The other big thing, love you too, was that William has these cool devil horn scars on his chest. Is that what that is? Yeah. Devil like horns? Spiral horns with like a thing. I thought it was just a pattern. I thought it was devil horns. Huh. Or demon horns. Some kind of horns. Now, why doesn't she say anything about that? I mean, that is the... I don't care how passionate I am. When I see that, I'd be like, what the... And they're not. it's not a tattoo. No, it's skin it's mark. It's ritual scarring. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Are you sure? Like, if you were super horny and into this guy? Pretty sure. At least to be like, hey, hey, what's that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would say something, I think, unless I'm, I don't know. You know what it is? Ruby is ready to have that dick. But then she's just like, eh, whatever, white guys be crazy. Maybe she's never had it with a white guy and she thinks that's the way they all are. <laughs> They're all marked like that. We all have weird fucking ritual scars on us. Oh, that could be, anything's possible. Anyway, he's got cool devil horns on his chest. We almost, but not quite, see Ruby's full-on boobies. Yeah. I was looking. <laughs> I was looking. Anyway, so they fuck. They fuck on a staircase. Ow. <laughs> Ow. That hurts. But remember, being really horny increases your pain tolerance. I don't care. It's still not well, she, good. She probably hasn't had neck surgery. That'll help. No. Uh-uh. No, that wouldn't help. No, because I have done it before neck surgery, and I have not done it after neck surgery. <laughs> and it, is, it hurts. Not enjoyable. In every which way. All right. I don't think I've ever... Yeah. Anyway. It's not good. good so it does not get the Pot of Thrones endorsement for <laughs> sex position. No. Okay, good. Good to know. Hope you guys are all listening. All right. Back into the tunnels. 
Tick does not trust Montrose. Montrose fesses up about having had the bylaws and he read it and he burned it and everyone's mad at him. So this is one of those points where they're just stopping to argue while they're on a timer. And if the timer runs out, they die. Right. <laughs> and, and they like, have less than is, an hour. This is the time to have a battle about the bylaws. And they're in some cavern under the city of Chicago. Boston. They were Chicago. under Boston. Yeah. So that was, what, a 15-hour drive? Right. Yeah, okay. And that's under modern traffic conditions, like 65 speed limit and all that. Mm-hmm. Okay, meanwhile, Letty finds a corpse, which at least stops them from being stupid. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the white boy neighbors that we saw in the last episode. That went missing. He was in a tunnel. So Letty really didn't know anything about it. So that's awesome. That's true. Yeah, that's They didn't clean up the blood. The ghost did. Or the house did. Something. Yeah. Um, But what we didn't see was hundreds of bones. Like, they should have been just floating around that water, shouldn't they? Do bones float? Well, who do you think's been down there? Well, we saw when we saw the three dead boys. Right. And it lit up the tunnel and there were just lines of skeletal corpses. Were Bro. there? Yeah. I didn't lines think there was lines. Was I just, thought there were maybe a few. All the way down the path. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, it's a floating white boy. I, uh, uh, oh, and they find... An elevator. It's Letty's elevator. So now they're under Chicago. Or something. Right. The elevator's magical. When it went down into the tunnel in the last episode, it lit up all these runes on its way down. So it could just be that the elevator itself is teleporting. Hmm, maybe that's the time machine. Maybe it's a great glass elevator and it can fly through the sky. Ooh, like Willy Wonka. (laughs) Or... There's some kind of magic, for sure. Because there's no way they could have walked back to Chicago in two hours. Right. <laughs> um, but they're not ready to go up yet because they haven't finished their mission. I would say, like, maybe we could go up and then come back tomorrow. Let's take a break. Down. Yeah. Go get some lunch. Right. Uh, I did write a note. I don't even remember who was doing what, but I wrote, don't get the corpse water in your mouth. Ah, uh, that yeah. is, yes. That is always something I think about when I see these people. <laughs> they're, like, swimming through the water, and then they're doing breaststroke and mm-hmm. all, opening their mouths and then spitting and it out. Yeah, their eyes. And then you got this corpse floating around. It's got chunks everywhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I always think of Big Trouble in Little China. There's a whole scene where they were in an elevator that got flooded and they came out into this area where there's so many rotting corpses underwater and they're swimming around and their <sighs> eyes are open. I mean, someone's got to get at least pink eyes. Gross. <laughs> pink <laughs> eye. <laughs> Stye. <You> got to. <laughs> right. <laughs> At least a minor eye infection later. Anyway, uh, and uh, during all of this, Montrose has some, they stop again. Montrose has some advice for Atticus about his relationship with Letty. Right. Always have a love song in your heart and your mind for your woman. If you're mad at her, just stop and sing that song to yourself. Uh huh. When women get to fussing, <laughs> <laughs> as if men don't get to fussing. No, no, we are always awesome. Mm-hmm. But again, you don't have time for this shit. Right, and Letty's, the, now Letty's swimming for, like, she's... Right, she's like, hey, guys, I found the vault. And she's like, 100 Whoa. feet ahead of them, and <laughs> something could have popped, like, spears could have shot right out of the wall at her. And <laughs> <laughs> so make the song in your heart more of a funeral dirge, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> she shouldn't have been fussing. Yeah. <laughs> Letty thinks she found the vault. There is a door, something that looks like a door. Uh, it's not actually a door, but there's an arm trapped inside a hole in the wall. Mm. Just an arm. And so I did take note that the arm seems reasonably fresh. So whose arm is it? It I, is reddish. I'm really kind of hoping that in like the next episode, there's like one of Lancaster's cops that we just see in the middle of a scene. They don't point it out, but he's just there and he only has one arm. I really hope we see that. I do too. That would be awesome. Look for that, guys. It's going to happen. So, yeah, anyway. Tick gets the arm out of that socket. It has a signet ring on it, but Tick doesn't have that one. He goes into his own pocket and pulls out his own signet ring from episode two and then jams his arm into what is clearly a trap. It does latch onto him. It's a trap. And, like, Letty's trying to pull on his arm, which seems like it's the last thing you should do because... Well, you don't know. You want to get your arm out. His whole hand's good. Well, he, but he wasn't trying to do it. She was pulling for No, him. I think he was at first, too. Right. Well, then he calms down. 
and it's taken some of his blood and it's filling up these little boxes above the door. Right. Which is a lock of some kind. Mm -hmm. And it registers his DNA, very quick DNA testing. And then a ladder drops down behind them. Right. These old shitty ladders pop out (laughs) from the ceiling when this thing is lighting up and taking blood and reading his DNA and saying, oh, okay, you're the one. (laughs) It's an intensely advanced magical, (laughs) but it's like a, I I think it's like a, like we want this to look like a door too, so that maybe people try to break through it, but it's not even the door. Maybe. Well, sure, it's just a wall. uh... But couldn't that have been like some magical appearing wooden staircase, like the plank had? (laughs) Well, I mean, the plank didn't exactly look like much. No, but it, it was more than a rope. Maybe it was magical rope that could hold, you know, any weight. Who cares? Like me. Maybe I could climb up that ladder. I think <laughs> you would be fine, sure. So, of course, they go up. And inside what... This must be Titus's vault. And inside, there are tons of desiccated corpses. And one of them was even like a mom nursing an infant. Yeah. Which sort of implies that, like, they died, like, really fast. Right. And she's standing up. Right. She's standing up. There's the baby another. Is on her nipple. Uh huh. And there's a, an Indian chief looking guy standing up. Or Yeah, lots of headdresses, mm-hmm. which may or may not have been. Sorry. That, that could have been, like, white guys wearing accoutrements. Should have, yeah. We don't know. It, right. Yeah. Who knows? Just some kind of weird ritual or, like, a, who knows, party, some fucked up thing. But it just seems like they all died really fast because they were frozen in some kind of, you know, di- like interesting positions that didn't seem mm-hmm. natural for dying people. Like, remember in Game of Thrones when they found, uh, the hound found that the the farmer and his daughter and they were like in bed and he had like slit yeah. his throat and slit his daughter's throat or something. Right. Like they were snuggling, but in a position that makes sense for people that are dying. Yeah. It doesn't if make sense. You die, you fall over. Standing and, yeah. Well, yeah. And staying standing after death too. That's Right. So... It's almost as if, like, the son of Adam turned to stone, but they didn't look stone. No, they just looked like mummy. mummy. Yeah, it's like they've time froze, mm-hmm. and they might still be alive. This is the part that reminded me of Pirates of the Caribbean. Ah. <laughs> it just seemed just too staged. Mm-hmm. Eh, but it was okay. And then they found the pages. But when he reaches for the pages, the hand clasped around the pages comes to life. And it's some kind of zombie. And instead of stabbing it in the brain, like most of us would do. They They sat and watched. They just watch it. They got some popcorn. (laughs) It took a while. Right. It took a long time. I'd be like, I would have been either ran, grab the thing and run. Right. Or yeah, stab it in the brain. Because you can't wait to see if this, this thing is clearly bad. You would think so. Mm -hmm. And then maybe not so much. So the zombie thing turns into a woman, a fully fleshed out, very pretty lady named Yahima. Well, she's not exactly a lady. So I looked that up a little bit, Mm -hmm. trying to find out, because I felt like whatever we saw on the screen there, it was too small to really... She said what she was. What'd she say? Man and woman. Right. Okay, so Atticus is interpreting for her. She's speaking, it said on the subtitles that she is speaking Arawak, but I guess Arawak is the people, and the language is actually Locano. Oh. But in any case, Atticus naturally understands this. Very Harry Potter there. Like right. The genetic Snake. being able to speak a language. Right, he's able to speak, wh- right. what's it understand called? Understand it, and then like he can speak to her, and she can understand him. It's very, very Harry Potter. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> on our first watching, I wrote, she has all sorts of symbols on her and maybe a penis. Because it was, it was really it just like, you know. They didn't it was, show it for long enough. To... Right. It was only for a second. And when we pause on the HBO Max app, that exact area is like partially dimmed because that's where the play pause stuff is. So you can't like see what's happening there. Mm-hmm. But when I when I looked up a little bit about uh, Yahima... It, you're right. She said something about man, woman, or woman, man, or something like that. And then um, maybe in the book, or maybe someone that just did deeper research, uh, like yeah, I, Yahima is a two spirit, hmm. which is some kind of uh, tribal word for anything that's not just regular man or woman, straight. You know, it could be anyone who's gay, intersex, like she is 
transgender, anything like, and this is an old term for people that are way more accepting than us motherfuckers are. <laughs> uh, like it was just a thing. It was just a way people are and that's okay. And if you have a boobs and a penis, then you are a two spirit and that's that. <laughs> Seems kind of nice. Like, yeah, it would be just... awesome to be able to have a penis and a vagina and boobs. I could impregnate myself and Does make my own nice? babies. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it might be painful too. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know about your penis, but mine doesn't bend that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> so she's an interesting cat. That's what we got. Right. Um, so we find her backstory. Titus uh, came to her on a ship searching for people that could read his book. Uh, she was helping him, but then realized he was a bad dude and she stopped working for him. She wouldn't translate anymore, so he genocided her people and trapped her. Yay. Right. Uh -huh. Now, uh, he, she said that she knew the language from the cave of Alamundi or something. Ala, Alamkundi, I think she called it. Mm. Uh, but how do you transcribe? I mean, she's a clearly a magical person. How do you transcribe something in a different language when you don't know the language? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I guess he had to teach her English first. No, no. She knew the language. It was a, the word oh, of she Adam. she ancient language, right. Okay. Right. Is different. So she's just some kind of well, god. Well, he must have learned Lacano. So he learns Lacano. She already knew how to figure out this other language because it was written in a cave. Right. How do you know, though? How does she know? Well, I don't know. How it's do a different people, language people than she. out how to interpret Egyptian hieroglyphics and Sanskrit and shit. Yeah. Have you just, they? Really? You just need they, it's their own interpretation. <laughs> this triangle means. Yeah, well, yes. That's what anthropologists do. And it's... I know, I know. 50% of the but... time, it's a scam. I don't know. But we'll take a word for it. Okay. I mean, it must have worked because he was able to cast some spells. Uh, okay, so Tick's like, hey, we're not like him. Please help us stop... Uh, yeah, people just, like we just him. Wanna, we just want to stop our people from getting hurt. Mm -hmm. And she says she doesn't trust him. She won't help. So Montrose grabs the pages like a dumbass. And the whole place starts to collapse with water. Water starts coming in from above these windows and shit. Right. How did that ship get surrounded by a cavern? Magic. Okay. <laughs> it might not even be in that cavern because of magic. They could have been under the ocean at that point. As soon as they climbed the ladder, they could be somewhere completely different. Hmm. Who knows? So the whole place starts to collapse. And of course, now tides come up, water's rushing in, and there is no more air. So they have to swim all the way from that ladder to the elevator. Someone, a Montrose, I guess, loses the pages on the way, and Letty has to swim to get those. Somehow, none of them drown. Uh, they get in the elevator... And uh, I wrote down, Tick and Letty kiss the corpse water off each other, because uh, uh, gross. Um, and yeah, I always think about that. Like it, It's it, already been on your mouth. Like the end of Die Hard, right? Like He's got blood all over he's him. He's got blood all over him. Some of it's his blood. Some of it's the blood of people he's killed along the way. And then like, right. like his, his ex-wife, whatever, Holly, she kisses. Kisses him as if like, it's nothing. The passion of a thousand sons. Sucks it right off his face. Yeah. Would you do that? If you thought maybe I was dead and then I came out and I was a hero. I am. Um, I'd killed a dozen people. Probably. Yeah. Interesting. No. We're gonna, I mean, it's a moment. You have to test that one of these days. <laughs> yeah. Gotta rub some stuff all over your face. See? <laughs> well, I got to kill like 12 people first. I, <laughs> only bad people. And I have to be in trouble. Yes. Uh, and then the Arawak lady tries to scree uh, speak up and she is a screecher. Not a pleasant noise. Well, she acted like she was feeling sick. Hmm. Like she was going, like holding her stomach and kind of bending over and looking like she's going to pass out. And then she made the noise. Interesting. I didn't notice that part. I was focusing on the noise. But that's an interesting observation. And that noise, speaking of Harry Potter, sounds just like the screeching noise from the Goblet of Fire, where it turns out it's mermaid speak. But if you're above the water, it's just horrible screeching noises. If you're below the water, sounds beautiful, beautiful singing. singing. Right. So, way to steal these ideas. I mean, that's what everything is now. Everything's Harry Potter. No, everything is everything. You take ideas from everywhere and you mash them up. True enough. Everything's a mashup. Um, okay. 
Back out on the road, Hippolyta and Dee are driving in Woody, and they're heading back to Chicago from Boston. Hippolyta's not happy. Hippolyta's not happy, and that's probably because they got a phone call or something. How? Because they have phones. So they went, okay, so they went up the elevator, called Hippolyta at the planetarium? What? Probably a hotel. A hotel. Because it was nighttime. Were they going to stay at a hotel? Well, wherever they were staying. She's out. driving home the same day. Well, she is now. 15 hours. That's not possible. Um, <laughs> she's got D. Okay, so I guess whatever that other guy's name. T- uh, well, he tree. was heading to Philly. After he that. took off. Yeah, he took on off. his own. Okay, so I was wondering what happened to him. Yeah, he'll be back. Uh, but D's question is, how did everyone else get back to Chicago? And Nebulite is like, I don't fucking know. Shut up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there, she's mad. D's confused, and D is looking through George's atlas, which was in the car, uh, in the glove box or whatever. And Hippolyta looks at that because she knows something funny is going on. Again. Right. She's she trying to figure it out. She's mad she's being left out. Right. And no, there's no way in hell that these guys got back to Chicago in two hours, like after dinner. There's right. no way that happened. But they're not telling me anything. So she looks at that Atlas and decides she's going to head for Devon County. <laughs> this cannot go <laughs> on. Does no. she have the orrery with her? I wonder. Maybe she put it in the No, because she didn't. You think she took it all the way to the... I don't know. Hmm. I'm just saying. Now, like, if you if you know that your husband was killed there or somewhere around there, would you be taking your daughter? Can't leave her at home. Can't you? I feel like she's old enough and safer at home. Plus, she has all of those people there. Safer. Yeah. Okay. Just. <laughs> well, D D gets to go on an adventure now. It's the girl's turn. Uh, and the final scene, everything seems like it's going to be okay over at the boarding house. Uh, we do learn that the the general, I don't know how Titus got this information, but whatever. Titus figures, or Titus, sorry, Atticus, uh, Tick, he figures that the, that Titus turned the lady into a siren, uh, Yahima, turned her into a siren so that she couldn't speak if she left the vault. Still very Harry Potter mermaid stuff. Like, they leave the water, they can't speak. Mm. Um, a siren, though? Uh, okay, so okay. It, this is all lore. Mythology, so that's cool. Uh, and Montrose says he's very proud of how brave Atticus was, yada, yada, yada. They have a nice moment, and then Atticus goes to bed. Montrose goes into that room, and it's the room, you pointed this out, the room that she's in appears to be uh, the, the room where Hippolyta Found the Ori. Mm -hmm. Right. And she's sitting at the same exact table. That the Ori used to be on. Yes. It's a a haunted room. And then a haunted Montrose enters that room, closes the door, walks behind her. She's just sitting there like sniffing a carrot or something. Yeah. And then he puts his hand on her shoulder, says, I'm sorry, and then slits her throat. Which she's surprised by. What is she going to do in this world? Maybe he was just trying to do her a favor. I don't think so. No. (laughs) No. Atticus was talking about he was going to try to teach her English so she could help translate the pages through writing. Right. Good luck. That's going to take years, but whatever. So you think is, how could Montrose be possessed? Say like he's possessed by the guy that owned the Hiram, the ghost, right? Okay. Say he's possessed by Hiram. At what point had Montrose come in contact with the house in order to be possessed by Hiram? He Before, has not. No. okay. If okay. he's possessed by anyone, it would have to be someone from from Artem. I just wanted to Samuel double check there. Okay. Or someone else. I don't sure. Know. Hmm. Maybe he's got a little bit of Shoggoth inside him. Hmm. I don't know. Yoggoth. No, Yagoth is the planet. Right. Well, I mean, maybe he's a little bit from there. I <laughs> was thinking all of this could be just alien technology. Well, essentially, that's what the Cthulhu mythos is. It seems like demons and monsters, but they're actually from another planet. So, Right. They yeah. think we are the demons and monsters. Although they do have magic. Like, they can cast spells. But that's okay. Magic is just technology we haven't figured out yet. Right. Science. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that's the episode. Holy mm. shit. And by the time we're recording this, it's almost time for the new episode. Sorry Oy. again, guys. Uh, but I am... Great I mean, show. My brain is swimming. I love this show. I don't show. even know what to think. Whew. 
Mm -hmm. It's a lot of stuff. Can't wait to see. Yep. So thanks for coming on that journey with us. The question, as always, is did we miss anything? Do you have any theories that conflict with our theories? Anything that we haven't thought about? Yes, I'm sure there's plenty. If so, drop us a line, please. You can reach me, uh, email jeff at podofthrones.com or at pod of Thrones on Twitter. And I believe my email is jennifer at pod of com. It sure is. Or reach me on Twitter at Kid Free Weekend. Woohoo! I did it. You did it. <laughs> okay. Um, so let us know. Uh, otherwise, we will see you guys for episode five. I don't even know what it's called. I should look it up. Mm. But episode five. We didn't watch the preview, did we? I think we did the first oh, yeah. time around. Maybe that was the one where we saw Hippolyta, Hippolyta. with armor on yeah. and shit. All right. I don't know. Something crazy is going to happen with Hippolyta. Let's go watch it. It's exciting. All right. Uh. We'll try to podcast earlier this next yeah, time. we'll try. Mm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back soon one way or another. Bye, everyone. Bye for now. Shock off. Shock.